I thought that was for people who were going to be hermits and didn't have a busy life and they had the time to do that and I didn't see the value in slowing down. Can you relate to what she is describing about meditation? That was my mom. You are about to hear our full conversation. Wow. I'm Maria. This is the Strong Body, Strong Soul Show. You have both of those things. I'm just here to remind you, and I can't even tell you how much I appreciate having my mom in my life to learn from, grow, and leave a legacy for my kids right along with me. Here we go. I just can't even tell you how grateful I am that we're able to connect in this way. I know. It's, uh, you guys, I've known this woman my whole life. (laughs) (laughs) And reaching this point where we acknowledge there's like this, there's so much more to us than just all the rules, whether it's religion or mother-daughter relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just appreciate it so much. I really do. And I I find that our relationship has taught me so much about learning from my own kids. I see my relationship with my kids being enriched Mm -hmm. by our openness. So today, today I wanted to talk with my mom and with you guys about some of the things that I've been learning lately that I think are so important, so vital to our society right now with the pandemic going Mm -hmm, on. mm -hmm. Of course, we all feel so isolated more so than ever. But I've been, as you know, on those meditation calls in the mornings. I've been waking up super early. Last week I had a 5.30 a.m. meditation. I've been doing a 7 a.m. meditation on most mornings, most every morning. And there are meditations with this organization that I've been working with. I've known about the organization for about 10 years, mm-hmm. but it's gone through its different metamorphosis. It's called ACAM, E-K-A-M. I'll put it in the notes here, but it was the Oneness University, and that's where I learned the Chakra Dhyana meditation. Right. But one of the things that keeps striking me as well, and it has been through the last couple of years, is not getting mired in the tools themselves. There are meditations going on all day, Mm -hmm. kind of like many organizations out there where Mm -hmm. you can find like-minded people Yes, and you can feel compelled to participate all of the time. Um, And I find I need to hold back a little bit. I can't meditate five times in a day. You know, like some people are doing a couple of meditations in the morning. Mm -hmm. The one that I've been participating in, frankly, has gotten longer than it was because they've added three different types of meditation, which is great. I really don't, I don't think you can meditate too much, but you need to find that balance where you can do everything else in your life as well. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. And I think that meditation in general, I think a lot more people I wish would lose their fear of it. So that's kind of where I wanted to ask you your perspective on it. As my mom, Uh (laughs) like the word heavily meditated, it's like prayer. How do you, what is your impression? What is your definition of meditation well that's a big question that's a big question uh, I have to say first of all that society taught me as a woman as a business owner as a mother as a teacher um, that my value was in how much I could do mm-hmm. how much I could do mm-hmm. how much value there was that and so I went to a retreat and one weekend up in the mountains and this lady said we're going to have a meditation and i was like oh my gosh rolling the eyes (laughs) (laughs) i tend to roll the eyes 
And so we did it, and she opened with a Barbra Streisand song, of all things, which was just perfect, though. It was perfect. Uh -huh. And she had a candle, and then she had music, and then she took us through a guided meditation. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I love guided meditations. Uh -huh. Those were my first introductions. I think that's a good way to start, uh -huh. at least. And then I came home, and I thought to myself, yeah, but I don't have a candle, and I don't have the music, and I don't know what to do. So I didn't start the it. The tools. Oh. See, we get stuck <laughs> on, we need that candle, we need that special incense, we need that special pillow to sit on. What about the timer? I or need the to breathing. know how long. The breathing. Oh, I <gasps> didn't know any Every of that. time she would go to a meditation, I'm doing it wrong. Am I doing it wrong? <laughs> and exactly. you can get caught up in it. Yes, yes. Yeah. So um, that was quite a few years ago. The, I understand why it's called the practice of meditation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get that either because like anything else, you need to practice at it. And I am not a really good devotee of it. Mm -hmm. I love it. I know what it does for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I get caught up. And you know, it's interesting. You'd think with the pandemic, I would have more time to meditate. Mm -hmm. But I don't... Yeah, it's not always part of my daily schedule and right, I talk right. to other people who every day men and women friends young and old who every day they get that meditation in no matter what right 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 um, my friend said to me one of my spiritual advisors said to me mm. today Wilma I want you to meditate for two minutes in the middle of the day and I looked at her like what that only two minutes is that all you think right, I could right, do right, imagine right. that was an almost an insult do you know that I could not stop during the day, caught up in the even for those two minutes for two minutes? Yeah, yeah, it's a challenge. So it's, it's a, challenge. a challenge. So yeah. to stop. Interesting. To stop. Um, I want to touch on a couple of things that you just said. Well, first of all, I would love to give whoever is watching out here a little bit of a tool okay. about breathing. Okay. Because I think that's what, one of the things I heard from you over the years was the whole thing, am I doing it right and am I doing it right? One of the ways I like to explain it is inhaling and exhaling. Mm -hmm. We do that all of the time whether we think about it or not. Right. So sometimes it helps to actually think the thought, I am inhaling, I am exhaling. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, we in our busy lives tend to be moving so fast all of the time that we're constantly breathing in and out, not paying attention, and we're fast all the time. Yes. We're not taking full advantage of the oxygen that we have available to us. Mm -hmm. We're not getting rid of, in meditation classes a lot of times, they're like, release everything that doesn't serve you, right? Mm -hmm. It's a very common thing to say, but truly if you think about your breath and you can and you you can survive even in a more efficient state if you exhale a little bit longer than your inhale okay oh because when you inhale you go it's it's a little more conscious a little more effort to take air in but when we exhale it's more relaxed and we don't push the breath out we don't give it any oomph so i like to say breathe in and when you breathe out, breathe out a little more because you will flush your body of air that you do not need. You actually will push it out of your body. So if you breathe in and out, sometimes I think I'm inhaling, I'm exhaling now. Even that little bit of now at the end mm -hmm. will add a little bit more on the exhale. And that can help a lot with relieving anxiety for people out there. Mm. And I know my, my mom has been in the workshops with me that I teach about chakra dhyana. It is a chanting meditation. Mm -hmm. And I teach people particular sounds to make on each of the chakras and such. But you don't have to be married to those terms either or that idea of even the word namaste mm -hmm. any of the vocabulary it's so much easier sometimes just to think I'm breathing in I'm breathing out now mm -hmm. and slow it down a little bit mm -hmm. the other thing is the hectic life 
lives that we lead. lead yes, yes. That you just mentioned frantic pace all of the time. Two minutes is hard to find in your day, right? So I wanted to tell you about this way. Science is catching up with energy, right? With studying energy and mm -hmm. how it works. One of the things that I've been learning about lately, which makes so much sense, it, it, it's the way it works and just the way they're describing it. Tell me if this makes sense to you. Okay. Our brain waves, our vibration of our body, there's electricity going through us all the time. Our heart rate, everything about us is at a particular vibration. Our life force is at a particular vibration. We're at it's called beta, B-E-T-A, mm -hmm. is let's say around a 40, level 40 on the spectrum of sound, of energy, our output, 40. That is thoughts coming at us all of the time, our busy day, all of the time. Most of us live in that state of speed, of our brain wave pattern, being at a beta at about a 40. When you slow your brain down, the current down, you slow it down to an alpha state, it's called. Mm. And that's somewhere around like 8 to 20 on this spectrum that the scientists have figured out. Alpha is when you're sleeping in a dream state. So your brain is still active, but you're asleep. The goal of meditation is to slow your brain down enough so that you're actually awake, mm -hmm. but have that slowed down mm -hmm. energy mm -hmm. of your brain. And it helps with concentration. That is the main reason they've been studying that, for many reasons, mental health, any kind of your brain, your neurological system is on a speed, on a vibration. So you slow it down to alpha. Then you can slow it down to sleeping state. No dreaming is a zero to an eight. That is called delta brainwave activity. Mm. In that state, you can have visions. That is where a lot of people who are psychic, who mm. that's where they go. Oh. That is a deeper level or a more awakened level okay. of consciousness at that level. Mm. So meditation can take you there as well. And then now they're just learning about gamma wavelength in the brain neurological is faster than all of that. It's so fast that it all melds together with everybody else. You're so fast that you're connected with everyone else. And that's where, from a spiritual standpoint, you would be talking about the collective consciousness. You're so fast that you're not even you anymore. You're in this place that is with everybody else. And that can happen in meditation? It can. It can. Wow. It can. So the goal is to move yourself around using meditation, using breath, using all the tools yes, yes. to help affect your brain, your brain patterns. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I've been learning a lot about is habitual thinking patterns mm -hmm. create ridges in your brain and they can study how those pathways, you keep returning to the same thought, the same thought, those Absolutely. thoughts dig in deeper, you, that's all you see anymore, all of the yes. time. Mm -hmm. So affecting these wavelengths, affecting energy meditation mm -hmm. can physically affect your brain and those pathways mm -hmm. i do believe you that. can change mm -hmm. those thinking mm -hmm. patterns mm -hmm. which is especially powerful to know about with mental health with addiction yes. with depression mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff now the main reason that i wanted to talk to you about and share this conversation with anybody out there the world health organization has recently stated that in the next five to seven years, we're going to experience on this planet a huge shift into depression. Oh. Because of the I, pandemic. Oh. We all know, we, I mean, oh. we have depression as an issue already, uh -huh. of course, mm -hmm. but it's gonna get worse. Oh my. And so 
I think it's so vital that we have conversations like this to help bring people's awareness up as to the importance of energy. How strong are our families? How are we going to deal with what's coming? The fortitude that we need, the awareness. I think it's so important to nurture it in advance. We, a lot of it maybe we can prevent, but at least we can move through it more gracefully. I have some tools of how we and walk have, through exactly. it. Exactly. And I also think about the expression from the seemingly bad can come the good. So from this, mm -hmm. what good things can we take from it? Absolutely. And it may mean that people will be more uh, aware, learn more about yes. how the brain works and what can be done. Yes, what you absolutely. Can do. Yeah. absolutely. And I love it what you said at the beginning here about practicing meditation. Oh. Because you can do the exact same meditation every single day, That's the right. exact thing, and you can hear it, you can feel it, you can gain from it in a different way each time, even though it's the same words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are different 24 hours later. When you do that same meditation, you're at a different place in your life. So I, I think that there are so many people out there that there are, t are talking about awareness, self-awareness, self-improvement, right. obviously. Mm -hmm. Mindfulness. Mindfulness. Yeah, yes. mm -hmm. There are so many voices out there, but I don't think any breath is wasted. I think that all of it needs to be talked about mm -hmm. and shared, and you don't know how you're going to affect somebody. I can't believe that we are having this conversation today, because first of all, I want to tell you that years ago, I wouldn't, people, I wouldn't, couldn't even talk to people about meditation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was absolutely no way. It was something, it was, it was something strange and not for me. And, um, and I didn't have a timer either to tell me how long I was meditating. Yes. Well, that's the thing, <laughs> the too. When again. I do meditation classes, I make sure the first thing I need to do is make sure everybody trusts me. Yes. Because they need to trust me as the facilitator that I'm going to guard their time. Yes. And sometimes just a 10-minute meditation can seem like hours. Mm -hmm. Things can shift in such dramatic ways. That's why, too, I say my life is so busy. I can't meditate five times a day. But the more I practice, the more concentrated it is and the more powerful, too. You know, Maria, I don't know if my brain waves can be changed, but I have to say this. There are times when I've meditated. For me, if it's a half hour, I'm very lucky. Uh -huh. If it's 20 minutes to a half hour. Mm -hmm. I could probably go longer, but I don't find the time. Sometimes I'll come out of one of those, or the time will go off, I feel like I've slept for eight hours. Yes. What is that? Physically, you feel yes, yes, new yes. energy. It doesn't always feel like that. Right. But I'm like, I just feel like I took this huge nap. I'm like, right. all ready to go again. Yeah. I'm glad you that's, said that. Because at my I, age, especially, yeah. you know, that's really important to get that kind of yeah. r r new energy, positive energy. Well, and sometimes I feel like I had a massage. Okay. Like, that's why some of my meditation oh. classes I want to do in the evening, so it's right before bedtime. Yes. But meditation, for me, is a way to activate energy, too. Okay. Not mm -hmm. just go, to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. It's more to activate that connection and energy. So it's really interesting. But I like what you said, too. It isn't like that every time. Because no. it's so important to lose expectations about it, too. Because we can go through our lives thinking, oh, I did it right that time. <laughs> and then the next time it doesn't work so well. And right. we can beat ourselves up for, oh, I must not have done the breathing right or right. whatever. Right. But um, yeah, fantastic. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys got something out of the breathing technique that I shared. I do want to go ahead and share the breath of fire, but we're going to do it on that other page. Okay. 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 It is true. I have a page on Facebook called Meditation with Maria. That's where my mom and I went to next because the breath of fire. We actually have to stick our tongues out. It's a little embarrassing. So if you are interested in deeper meditation talk, go ahead and find me over there. Belly laughs are my favorite kind of energy, by the way. If you didn't notice, my mom is very similar to me. You see where I get it. 
expand outside your comfort zone. My mom and I have been having so much fun with her here. We are serving up all sorts of energy. We recently started doing cooking videos. That's right. So you can look up Cooking with Maria on Facebook as well. If you want to see some of our antics over there on Instagram, you can find my mom there with me too on the Strong Body, Strong Soul page as well. But I hope that you enjoy your day today. I hope you find some time to take the time to breathe slowly, reduce that stress and anxiety, and keep coming back to the show. Thank you once again. I am Maria, just in case you forgot. I'll talk to you soon. Take care of the earth is our mother. We must take care of the sky.